ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಶತಾದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶಿವಾಚಾರಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ So today which chapter are we looking at? Chapter 12 which is Bhakti Yoga. Uh, will people see my screen? Please confirm. Okay, so what did we see yesterday? It was the Vishwarupa Darshan, right? Krishna showed Arjuna the universal form. Then what did he say? Everything is within him, right? So now we saw Krishna, Arjuna had a lot of questions, Arjuna had the doubts, why he is fighting, all that he says. Now Krishna says, you surrender to me, how to surrender, how to attain Krishna, all that we said. And now all that we, uh, Krishna has already answered. Now Arjuna is asking him about the devotional service. So this chapter, chapter 12 is very special. Because here Krishna says, how you can serve him, how you can serve the Lord, right? So today we'll go and see the chapter 12, which is Bhakti Yoga. Arjuna and Kvayat, which is considered to be more perfect? Those who are always properly engaged in your devotional services or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested? So now the question is, who do you think are the perfect devotees? who are doing your puja part every day, who are like uh, continuously, who are uh, completely devoted to you or is it the person who worships the impersonal Brahman? Who is the impersonal Brahman? Who is the impersonal Brahman? Anybody wants to answer? Anybody knows who's the impersonal Brahman? No. I see one answer is no. Okay, we'll see that. Okay. So Brahman is the, there are three stages of, stages of realization of the Lord. Okay, Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Brahman is worshipping nothing. There is nothing in the Brahman. Okay, so like worshipping the Lord as anything. Okay, without knowing the Lord. Without understanding the Lord. So that is unmanifested stage. So you have not realized whom the Lord is. Is that the right way to? See, imagine like, uh, sorry, imagine you are a worshipper, you, uh, you want to drive a car, okay, you want to drive a car and you are, you've seen this car simulator study. If you go to the Maruti driving school, they have a car simulator and you start simulating on the, driving on the simulator. Which is the best way to drive a car? When do you become a, a good driver? When you are on the simulator or when you have someone sitting by next to you and giving you a training or when you start driving on your own. Which is the stage? When you are very confident and you are, you are okay to drive. When you drive on your own, right? When there is nobody sitting by your side or there is no trainer sitting by your side. There is probably your family member sitting by your side who believe that you are the best driver. Right. So that is how it is. Brahman is without knowing the Lord, impersonal realization without. So, so what, what the question was, the unmanifested form. Okay, we have not given any form to the Lord, we are just worshipping the Lord. The second one is the Paramatma form. 
Paramatma is the 400 form of uh, Krishna, which is Vishnu. Vishnu is again like the driver, trainer who is sitting by next by you. And Bhagavan is the ultimate, the Krishna form. So that is the three stages of self realization, God realization. Okay. So what is the ways in which, what are the ways, the prescribed dharma, with what is the prescribed dharma in the four yugas? What is the prescribed dharma in Kali Yuga? What did the Lord say? He saw that, right? How do we, how do we uh, realize God in the, in the Kali Yuga? Nama Sankirtan, chant, that's absolutely right. Chanting, right? Okay. That's wonderful. So in the Satya Yuga, it was meditation on Lord Vishnu. Treta Yuga, it was performing sacrifices. Dvapar Yuga, it was elaborate temple worship. And in Kali Yuga, current age, chanting. Harinama, Harina, Harinama, Kevalam, right? Only the name of the Lord. Simple. The Supreme God Personality of God, it says, those who fix their minds on my personal form, and are always engaged in worshipping me and the great transcendental faith with the great transcendental faith are considered to be uh, by me to be the most perfect now what was Karjana's question who is most perfect the one who is always uh, devoted and uh, um, give a completely surrendered to you and serving you all the time or is the person who's uh, who's worshipping your Worshipping the uh, Brahman's tab, uh, the uh, what did we saw? Sorry, I did just miss the question. Yeah, the unmanifested form, yeah, right. What is who's the perfect? So now Krishna says, The supreme personality of God had said, Those who fix their mind on, the, on my personal form and are always engaged in worshipping me and with great transcendental faith are considered to be the most perfect. So he says, which form is Krishna saying? This, uh, the people have to worship. The Krishna form, right? He says, those who are fixed, their minds on my personal form. He says, it is his personal form in which people have to get fixed. So it is the Krishna form. It is not the other forms that he is uh, showing, asking people to be fixed on. It is the Krishna form that he is asking to be fixed on. Right. No? So this is our Radha, Radha Govinda temple, and this is our personal form, Krishna's personal form. And where is this? This is at Iskon Bangaluru. But those who are who fully who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, and all pervading inconceivable, unchanging, fixed and movable and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth by the control by controlling the various senses and by and being equally disposed to everyone. Such people engaged in the welfare of welfare of all at last achieve me. So what does he say? It is one is people who are unman worship the unmanifested. Okay, so people who are still worshipping the unmanifested form that which people that which lies beyond the perception perception of the senses so they give up their senses they are all pervading inconceivable unchanging fixed and immovable they also they also achieve Arya achieve the Lord at the end they also achieve Krishna at the end that's what Krishna says everybody many of the many people achieve Krishna but who is the perfect the one who was worshipping and who is there doing his devotion services to the personal form of Krishna. Others also achieve. For those minds that are attached to the unmanifested impersonal feature of the supreme advanced in this uh, advancement is very troublesome. To make those progress in that discipline, the discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. 
Now Krishna says, people who worship the unmanifested form, they also achieve Krishna. They also achieve the Lord, but they don't achieve the way the people who worship the Brahman form achieve. So what happens is people who worship the unmanifested form, they go into meditation, they take multiple births to achieve the Lord, achieve Krishna. But if you worship the Lord directly, when you worship the Paramatma directly, what happens is you get the lift. We saw the example of the lift, right? You remember? Stars are the lift. So what, what do we take? What do we take? We take the lift, right? Because lift when we take the lift when you take the, when we take bhakti yoga when we start chanting the name of the lord we get to the lord much faster it is the direct uh, direct uh, from one point to other point direct you can just immediately reach the place immediately reach krishna but if you go to the worship the unmanifested form and keep meditating, you take, you'll take multiple births. It is not that still you cannot achieve, you can achieve. It only takes the time. Right? But those who worship me, giving up all their activities onto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional services, and always meditate upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Partha, for them I am the swift delivery from the ocean of birth and death. So is this something that I am telling? It is something like Lord is telling himself, right? It's not something anybody else is going to explain you better. Lord himself has explained in detail. Those who worship me, give up all their activities onto me. So yesterday someone asked, I want to become a billionaire, right? What do they say? You worship me. Give up all your activities on to me. You want to become a billionaire? Don't worry. I'll make you a billionaire. But you devote all your activities on to me. And being devoted to me without deviation. It is not only because you want to become a billionaire, you serve the Lord. Only because you want money in, the, in your life, you don't serve the Lord. You serve the Lord just because you want to serve the Lord. You have nothing else to want. You don't want to do anything else. Then God will make you whatever He wants to make you. Engage in devotional services and always meditate upon me, having fixed your mind upon me. Doesn't mean that you don't do anything, okay? Arjun, we already saw it before. If it is your it is your karma to do your duties and leave the results to the Lord. Staying attached but detached. Okay, I'm making it very clear. So it is staying attached, but being staying detached. Attached to the work, attached to the devotion, attached to Krishna. The best, most important is being attached to Krishna and doing your karma without having the expectation of results. So detached from the results. Okay. So that is what Krishna says here again, giving up all their activities on to me and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional services and always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me. He says, do your devotional services, engage me yourself in devotional services, meditate upon me, think about me. Okay, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Partha, for them, I am a swifter delivery from the ocean of birth and death. What does Krishna do? He just comes and rescues this person. What is happening in the flood? Okay, when there are floods and other things happening, there are, when there is uh, natural calamities happening, what, what, does the, what do the helicopters do? In the middle of the place, they come and rescue, right? They just come from nowhere and then just suddenly they, the whole thing is done and people have got rescued. So that's how, that's how Krishna will do it. That's how Krishna will deliver. When you walk a long distance, okay, when we have, how many of you have been to places like Vaishnava Devi and things? 
you walk almost 14 hours, 8 hours to 14 hours to reach the temple on the top. And then there is a helicopter service which actually picks up people from the top and drops you at the bottom of the temple, what the bottom of the hill. How long does it take? Four minutes, three minutes? That's the duration of the flight. You want to travel from, say, one Bangalore to Delhi. It takes almost 24 hours to reach there, right, by train. Forget the other mode. Even you take a reasonably faster mode of transport, which is the train, it takes 24 hours. What do you do rather? You take the flight, right? It reaches, it makes you reach in three hours. Three hours, three and a half hours. You're there. So that's why he says, when you are devoted upon me, meditating upon me, for them I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. From this ocean of birth and death, that we cycle of birth and death that we are going through, Krishna says, I'll deliver in no time. You will surrender. Once you surrender to me, I'll take care of it. So now the so what does the person who, uh, what do you do now? Do you want to, I will go to the mountains and focus on the Brahma? Brahman, sorry. Is that the way to start it? If you go to the mountains, what will happen now? It will be too cold. Will you be able to focus on Brahman, Krishna? Now what will you be focusing on? You will be focusing on the weather. Say like it is too cold. I will do it tomorrow. I will start focusing it tomorrow. I'll go to the deserts and focus. Is it fine? No, then again there it is going to be. It is too hot to stay at the deserts. So I will go to the forest. Then what happens? You are what if the tiger attacks me? You are afraid of the animals, right? You've seen, you've seen these old images wherein the Rishi Munis always used to sit on the, uh, they used to sit on the tiger skin, right? Anybody knows why tiger skin? Anybody know why tiger skin? Okay. That's because the tiger skin has a smell always. And because it's a tiger smell, no other animal will come nearby. Even the tigers don't come nearby. Exactly. No other animals would not have harm him. Today, can you get a tiger skin? No, today you go for a tiger, you get a tiger skin, then you go together with the tiger skin to the jail, right? So that is how it is. So today it's, it's not the way, we, it's, not the, that's, it's not the same what it was before. So we need to change. So what can you do in this Kali Yuga? Chant the name of the Lord. As simple as that. Like, like, what, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you just chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the way to Bhakti Yoga. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You chant it at home, chant the uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra at home, chant if you want, you can. As a Sankirtan, you can bhajan, you can do a bhajan, you can do chant in public. We saw all the places the way we can chant, right? Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Kevalam. Kalalu Nasti, Eva Nasteva, Nasteva Gatir, Anyata. So he says, like, that is the fastest. In Kali Yuga, there is no other way. No other way, no other way, except the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Okay. Fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus you will live in me, in me always without a doubt. So he says, yeah. fix your mind in Lord Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engage all your intelligence in Lord Krishna. Thus you will always, without, you will live 
in me then he says once you fix your mind in krishna what happens is krishna will live in you thus you will live in me so what happens is you will start living the way living through krishna okay what happens is when a devotee gets to krishna devotee krishna gets attached to that devotee more than the devotee getting attached to krishna krishna gets attached to that devotee thus you live in me always that's why krishna says then you become a part of me without a doubt right no that's where we want to be we want to be if you imagine krishna considers you to be a part of uh, himself is that not ult- uh, unlimited everything unlimited power unlimited wealth everything if krishna is you are going to be part of krishna that that makes it so comfortable right so great right that's why krishna has just fix your mind upon me the supreme god just surrender to him completely and engage in engage all your intelligence in krishna thus you will live uh, in the in the me always live in krishna always and that's again he clarified that's without a doubt oh dear arjuna oh winner of wealth if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga in this way develop a desire to attain okay today we are in our, we are all in kali yoga so we cannot uh, we are always doubtful okay if you are doubtful that's not a problem no? you cannot devote i understand but what you can do is follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga start chanting when you chant what happens you slowly develop a desire to attain the lord so he gives you the path to attain him right you start chanting start serving the lord in terms of small activities chant chant in front of him talk about the lord and offer prasad to the lord right take take for the food as prasad as simple as that what will happen that way in this way you will develop a desire to attain the lord right makes it easy does it not make it very easy if you cannot practice the regulative principle regulations of bhakti yoga then just try to work for me because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage now he says okay now you can't do one chanting okay doesn't matter work for me just give some uh, just see this person who is doing the who is constructing the temple is probably working as a part of some temple he says start to working for me like that he doesn't know which god he is worshiping for working for probably he doesn't know why he is working for the lord he is all working for the money for money what he is wanting to earn but what happens here he indirectly without knowing he starts serving the lord that's why the lord says if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga then just try to work for me because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage slowly you will start realizing the lord right is there i ask you this question how many of you know this person now anybody google Alfred Ford he is the grandson of i think the great grandson of Henry Ford right and here he is the so you can see that it is raining us dollars here from all over the globe with us dollar 30 million from alfred ford the great grandson of henry ford another us dollar 400 to crore donation for his god temple that's right okay the 68 year old alfred ford ambarish das okay he is he is being given the vaishnava name ambarish das and who gave him disciple of iskon founder is he 
Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada since 1975. He took initiation in ISKCON and he has directly met Srila Prabhupada. So that so, makes him so special. And Srila Prabhupada told him that I want you to construct a temple at Mayapur. And he's been, he's been struggling to get the permissions and things for a very long time. And they finally started the work in the year 2020. I think 2018 or 17 or 18, they got the permission to start it. And the work started just before the lockdown. And today it's going on in full swing. The most likely the temple is going to be opened in 2024. It's going to be one of the largest Hindu temples and it has to, it is going to be the museum of Krishna consciousness. So Ambarish Das is like Ambarish Maharaj. Okay. It is a story of, there's a story of Ambarish Maharaj. And I will tell you the story of Ambarish Maharaj also. Ambarish Das is a Vaishnava name. What, what in his con we also do is, once people take initiation, once they go to an advanced stage and take an initiation in Krishna consciousness, when you, when you have to take an initiation, you will have to have gone through the course of Gita for a very long time. You should have completed Bhakti Shastri. So that is, so today you are in level 1, Bhakti, Vriksha. Okay. So now you will go to Shraddha 1, which is level 2. Then there is level 3. Then there is level 4. Okay. Level 4 is Bhakti Shastri. Where you have multiple books to read. One is Bhakti, one is the Bhagavad Gita and complete. It will have nectar of devotion, it will have nectar of instruction, then you will have the book of Krishna, then you will also have Bhagavatam classes in Bhakti Shastri. When you have completed all these, you will also go through different levels of examinations in them. Examinations is not to test your uh, skill, your uh, skills, it is to test your knowledge, okay, how much you have gained and test your skills, sorry, it is first to test your skills and knowledge. Okay, it is not to test what you know, what you know more. Okay, it is not a mugging up and doing it, it is a proper examination where you test how much you understood the Kaur Gita and the Krishna consciousness. Once you have done that, you go through initiation, you follow the four uh, regulative principles, you give up meat completely, you give up intoxication, even including coffee, tea. Okay, you give up any kind of uh, illicit sex. It is not that you need to care to give up your family. You can always still stay in the family. Okay, then you start serving the Lord. So these are the four basic regulative principles that Iskon has. And then even you say uh, meat, this is also in an intoxication. They also give up onion, garlic. So with all that, people take initiation and when they take initiation they are given a Vaishnava name okay, because every, everybody has different names but when they come to ISKCON and they take an uh, um, initiation everybody is given a Vaishnava name okay so why then they become popular and they, they are known in ISKCON only by the Vaishnava name so here like uh, Mr. Alfred Paul, Alfred Ford, he has been given the Vaishnava, Vaishnava name Vishnila Prabhupada as Ambarish Das. Okay. How can you donate? Maybe if you want to donate, we are all students, so we don't expect any donations from everybody. And like I already told you, there can be messages in the WhatsApp groups, personally sending it to you. Is called Mangalaru is asking for this money. This course is so much. You can all join. Nothing. Nothing doing. Nothing is, we don't ask donations directly to anybody. Any, if you want to voluntarily donate, you can always donate only through the Iskon Mangalaru website. And there we have different sevas if you want to donate for. You can become a life member. You can, we can, I'll again go through the details of it at the end. Okay, All right. Okay. If, however, you are unable to work in this Krishna consciousness of me, then try to act, giving up all results of your work and try to be self situated. 
Uh, so that's what Krishna again says. Like if you okay, you if you're still not be able to give up all your uh, give up all the work, okay, that's still fine. At least give up the results. He says, do bhakti yoga. You are not able to do bhakti yoga. Okay, serve me. Work for me. If you cannot still work for me, okay, work for yourself. At least give up the results. Is it not something that Krishna is making it very, very simple? He is taking you through different stages. He says, first thing, you give up all your results. Now he says, give up all your results. He said, you do everything for me. If you are not able to do everything for me, okay, do work for yourself. But what you do is work for me while you are working for yourself. Now what happens? Okay, that also I cannot do. Okay, if you cannot do that, at least start chanting. He says, no, no, I cannot even chant. He says, okay, don't do chanting also. At least do whatever work you want. Leave the results to me. At least the, uh, we made a deal in the start of the, cl the classes, right? We said we give, we curse the Lord for all the wrong things. Anything that doesn't happen in the way that we want to be cursed a lot. See, God did not give me. He said, we'll give the wrong things also. We also give the good things also, right? We stand by that deal, right? So when he says, Krishna is the at least give me the results. So I'll take care of the results. Don't put the, uh, the burden of results on yourself. If you cannot take this to practice, then engage yourself in cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, however, is meditation. Better than meditation is renunciation of fruits of action. For such renunciation, one can attain peace of mind. Now, this is where Krishna is clarifying, he's summarizing now. If you cannot take this to practice, then engage yourself in cultivation of knowledge. At least read about me. If better than knowledge is, however, is meditation. What is meditation is about thinking about Krishna. And better than meditation is renunciation of fruits of action. If not, just don't expect the fruits. Leave the fruits to me. I'll take care of it. By, for, the, for by such renunciation, one can attain peace of mind. At least by doing the, for, uh, not thinking about the fruits of action, you will at least attain peace of mind by not thinking about the results. Reasonable? Is that not reasonable? One who is not envious but a kind of friend to all living entities who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant always, satisfied, self-controlled and engaged in devotional services with the determination, with determination, his mind and intelligence is fixed upon me. Such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. He says, one who is not envious, one who is not envious but is a kind of friend to all living beings. How do you treat everybody? You treat everybody equally. Who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego. You don't think yourself to be the center of everything. You don't want everything to be your way alone. Who is equal to both happiness and distress? You have a problem, you still smile. You are very happy, you still do, only that smile. Who is intolerant? Who is tolerant? Who is tolerant? Tolerant to everybody. So what was happening a year ago? Everybody was talking about what? Intolerance, right? So here Krishna says, who is tolerant, always satisfied. Who are the people who are talking of intolerance? People who could not be satisfied in life, right? They, did, they were not happy with whatever they had. They wanted to have something more. They wanted themselves to have more, or at least the people within themselves to have more. They were not looking everybody at equal as equal, right? So who is tolerant, self-satisfied, looks at everybody equal as equal, who is free from false ego, self-controlled and engaged in devotional service with determination, his mind and intelligence is fixed on the Lord. Such a devotee is very dear to the Lord. He by whom 
no one is put into difficulty who is disturbed who is not disturbed by anyone who is equally poised in happiness and distress fear and anxiety is very clear to me have you seen any uh, any people who have realized who are sadhus you see them very calm right uh, even you go to his contemple do you see people who get angry and then shout at each other especially the people from the temple side not the devotees who are coming devotees anybody can come right have you seen people shouting at each other we you go to other temples that they got of other they are temples of other demi gods when the pujari is somewhere there okay and there is a lot of crowd what do they say go away, go away, go away, go away, right and if you stay there for a little longer you take another couple of seconds more what happens they just push you out no but in his corn what do they do if someone is having that they don't push them they always request them prabhu ji can you keep please please move because not because uh, you 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 have it's your time which is you have already seen it is not that way so you are enjoying but you have the other devotees also who are waiting to enjoy they don't say you go in the same prabhuji people behind are waiting for someone else but there are people waiting behind you can you please just move around and you can always have the darshan of deity from a little behind right have you seen iskon temples where you just go to the garbagaraj that's the way the temple was modified for this kali yuga the garbhagraha has a big hall this garbhagraha and then after that there's a big hall where you can view the lord from there right it is not that the ancient the kind of the ancient temples where you directly go it was that was a concept before because there were less number of people the population was less so people can go could spend time with the lord at the garbhagraha itself but today it is not that way no there are so many people and everybody wants to get something done from lord and who is the person who goes there and say like lord i'll pay you 20000 bucks and i am telling you so much cash and saying give so many go so much of gold i will do this activity and give another one if you give me this what is they are all doing transaction that and god has to listen to everybody you know god is god so he has to take the everybody's requirements he's he is like he is not like politicians when you have something like you just give them a chit of uh, requirements and then he takes everything and then puts it away god doesn't do that he has to weigh the importance weigh the priority for each and every requirement everybody goes and requests something to the lord he has to understand any he has to give them the results and he knows everything when you are going to ask something he knows you are going to why you have come why you are asking something and he knows whether you need to he you need to really deserve that if you he has to give you or not right my, my devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities who is pure expert without cares without without cares free from all pains and not striving for some result is very dear to me so what do we do it's a covid time okay everybody is going to get a job or no we don't know right are you sure when you get out of college you're going to get a job how many of you think if you get out of college you will definitely get a job no is a guarantee on that right you only why do you go to some specific colleges because you will get uh, the, the college has marketed itself to be the master in placement services right why do you go to some special colleges and what do they say they never, is there a college which says placement is assured is there one college which says 100% placement assured no what do they say they say 100% placement assistance right they don't say placement as is assured 
is a hundred percent placement. Then they put assistance in a small word. In a small font, they say assistance. So what do they do? They say we will assist you for placement. We will not assure you placement. They put the big banner where hundred percent placement is big red, green, everything. Blue, which is in in, in a font of as big as as are uh, as big as V itself, and then they put assistance in a small size. So that is how they are marketing, right? So what did Krishna? What does Krishna say? My devotee is not dependent on placement. He is not dependent on the results. He is devoted to me, and studying with complete. Devotion. Makes sense? Makes it easy to understand? He says, my devotee who is not dependent on ordinary course of activity, he is not an ordinary man. He's not an ordinary person. He's my devotee. So he is not looking at all results. He is pure, expert, without cares. He is not, he's not worried because he will get a placement, because there is some training. Because that is going to happen, he is going to get busy. He's not looking at everything. He he works on everything. He improves himself on everything, and he is devoted to the law, free from all pains. If he gets an interview, goes to an interview today, he doesn't go through that interview. He is not attached to that results. He says, "Okay, I didn't do it today. I do it later sometime." Krishna did not want to go get this job for me, right? Krishna thinks. This uh, this exam, this uh, interview, or this company wasn't good for me, or I'm 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 made to, I'm built for to make a own company of myself. That's how it is, right? That's how Krishna thinks. Just give me a mobile. Uh, one moment, my laptop charge is twenty minutes. I just switch on the charger. Okay, what does Krishna say? He is not striving for results. He is very dear to me. Right? Now you understand what you want have to do. Mayan Prabhuji, you asked for the linear. So he says you don't depend on you don't depend on ordinary cause of activities. What do you do? Don't depend on ordinary cause of activities. You be devoted to the Lord, who is pure, expert. When he says expert, what are you expert in? Expert in the skills that you have. Expert in what you want to do, and you are an expert in serving the Lord also, without cares. Okay, free from all pains of life. You said you want to become a billionaire. If God gives you tough times, billionaire is not something you become tomorrow. No? How do you become billionaire? They go through very tough times. They all they go through the process of a silkworm becoming a butterfly, right? And when they go through that, it is pure. We see only billionaires who have been successful. We don't see the pains that they've gone through. How many of you agree? Yeah, true, right? We don't see the pains that they've gone through. There's a movie which comes up. There was a movie called Guru, which came up on uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dhirubhai Ambani. You saw it, the movie just is like it's nothing, right? It is like it just shows in three years how difficult it was for his life, and we all enjoyed it as entertainment. But that is a lifetime that it has taken to him, right? The Tatas have gone through lifetime of that, lifetime of struggle, and there have been generations of struggle. That's how they become such a huge organization in the country. No small, no company, no startups today have just started just like that. They've gone through struggles. Every startup has its own story. Every company which has become a large enterprise today has its own story of struggle. And they are perfect, but they are free. They are not. They are not attached to the results. 
you go to any of these startup, big startups and say, I want you to invest another 100 crore on something. They'll say, okay, I don't worry about the results, but tell me how we can do it. Can you pitch the concept, pitch the idea, right? That's how, that's how, how, that's how they call today, right? The investors, what do they say? I'm ready to invest. I'm ready to take the risk. What do they say when they are they're ready to take that risk? They say, I'm not attached to the results, but I want to assess the idea. Right? That's what Krishna says. When you are doing like that, you are, he is very dear to me. But we should set target and we want to achieve this. That is all something. See, that is all the management that was taught to you. So he says, you say you want to achieve this. Okay. You can always try to achieve this. But if you don't achieve, it is not, achieving or not achieving is what Krishna will take care of. You say, Krishna, I want to achieve so and so results by this year. I want to pitch my idea. I want to take this idea forward. And this is how I want to have a problem statement ready by the next three months. Yes, that is a good idea. That is a good target to have. Set the target, but then focus on the process. That's right. So focus on the process and leave the results to Krishna. Do your duty. You have to see. It is not that, okay, now I am completely devoted to Krishna. I do nothing. Krishna will take care of everything. Krishna will put you where you should be. But you say, I will do anything. I'll do I'll do my work properly. And have I have this is the path in which I want to grow. I will focus on this path. And I will surrender the, to the results to Krishna. Why? Then it is if I fail, I can always say Krishna is going to support me. There is always Krishna is going to support me. In my success, there is always Krishna. You see this law, uh, the picture of Lord kept in many desks in the offices. Okay, your teachers still have the desk in their on their desk they have. Why many people they don't realize why they have to do it? Some people do it because some people who have realized they do it because they want the results to be given to the Lord. They are not worried about the problems. They are always want the results and the actions to be with the Lord. One who neither rejoices or grieves who neither laments nor desires and who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things. Such a devotee is very dear to me. So that is what I have been explaining for the past few minutes. One who is equal to friends and, the, and enemies, who is equipoised in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything, who doesn't care for any residence, who is fixed in knowledge and who is engaged in devotional service. Such a person is dear to me. Okay, so now you asked who is Ambarish, uh, Ambarish Dasa, right? Why your name Ambarish Dasa? You see this image? Okay, the one who is uh, in the white dress is Ambrish Maharaj. And the one who is the sadhu here is Durvasamuni. What is Durvasamuni uh, known for? Cursing, right? Yeah, wonderful. Keshav Prabhu, that's a good answer. He is known for his anger. But he is a very strong devotee of the Lord. So what happens once is Ambarish Maharaj is having his Ekadashi Vrata. And once he is taken as Ekadashi Vrata, he is having a Nirjala Ekadashi Vrata. So when there is time to break the Ekadashi, so what we, did, what we do is we start Ekadashi on the previous day. Ekadashi is done. There is the period during the Dvadashi where you have to break the fast. Okay. And that's how when, when even when we send the Ekadashi message on the group, we send start of fast and the right time to break the fast. Okay, so that's the best uh, best one to do. So now Ambrish Maharaj is uh, the time is the nearing where he has to break the fast, and Durvasamuni comes. 
Durasa Muni says, Ambarish Maharaj, <coughs> let us have, let us break the fast together. And uh, Durvasa Muni has gone for taking bath. So Durvasa Muni takes a longer time and Ambarish Maharaj is a little worried because the time for breaking this fast is nearing and it's almost towards the verge of the end of that time. And Durvasa Muni is taking bath. So he calls his learned brahmanas and asks them, what do I do now? Brahmanas suggest them that, okay, Durvasa Muni is, uh, uh, has already asked you for this, but can you, you have, you have taken a nirjala fast. What you can rather do is take water. That way you have break a broken fast and you have also not broken the promise you gave to Durvasa Muni that you will have uh, food with him together. So there is, see what happens is when these learned people come, come when great uh, Muni or great Pandits like Dhruvasa Muni come, what is important as a king is that you serve them because they are serving the Lord directly. So you serve them, you don't, you wait for their direction. So he has told that we will have food together. So now, he has to he kinda he has to break the fast, but he cannot break the fast. So he takes water. Okay. So then once he sips the water, what happens is Durvasha Muni immediately comes and he says, Now you have broken the fast. You, you have broken the promise you gave to me. You've started your food before me. Now I am going to curse you. Now once the moment the moment Durvasha Muni says, that he is going to be, he is going to curse Ambarish Maharaj. And Ambarish Maharaj, who is he? He is a strong devotee. He is a devotee of the Lord Krishna. So when he, once he says that, Sudarshan Chakra goes, goes after whom? It goes after Durvasana. So that's what you see on the right. Sudarshan Chakra is after Durvasamani. So Durvasamani gets fearful. He goes to all the demigods, all demigods, so no sorry. It's a Sudarshan Chakra. I, we cannot do anything. Any other weapon that we could help, we could have done. Now Sudarshan Chakra we cannot. He goes to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva says, no. This is sent by Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu. So please go and check with Lord Vishnu why he has sent the uh, uh, he has said the Sudarshan Chakra against you. I cannot stop the Sudarshan Chakra without knowing why it is being done. So then Durvasamuni goes to Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu says, no, I did not send the Sudarshan Chakra to you. So you better check what you have done. So then Durvasamuni says, I, I was about to curse Ambarish Maharaj. So then Vishnu, Vishnu says, yes, so that is the sin that you have done. When you do, when you go and curse, when you are ready to curse the devotee, the Sudarshan Chakra is no more under my control. The Sudarshan Chakra protects the devotees. It goes without even my knowledge. Because the duty of the Sudarshan Chakra is to protect the devotees. So I can use it as a weapon, but Sudarshan Chakra's primary motive is to protect the devotees. And you have tried to curse a devotee. That is a big, that is a big sin. So now Durvasamani says, how can you protect me? Lord Vishnu says, no, I cannot protect you. Durvasamani is very worried. He says, there should be some way. Is there a way? Then he says, there is only one way. Is what? You ask for forgiveness from Ambarish Maharaj. Then Durvasamani goes directly to Ambarish Maharaj and asks for forgiveness. So you can see on the left, he has gone to Lord Vishnu and then he asks for forgiveness from Ambarish Maharaj. Then Ambarish Maharaj once he is asked forgiveness from Ambrish Maharaj, the Sudarshan Chakra stops. Okay, was a nice story. Yeah. So 
for those who follow the imperishable path of devotional services and who completely engage themselves in faith, in faith, making me the supreme goal, they are very, very dear to me. That's what he says. You can see when you are devoted to the Lord. So what, is, what do you see here? The first image, who is it? Lord Rama with Hanuman, right? So, a very strong devotee, a wonderful devotee and God hugs him by heart, right? On the second one, this Prahalad Maharaj. Imagine the furiousness of Narasimha Avatar. Even when we see on the uh, uh, on the play that we see on some of the uh, in our childhood, and then when it comes on TV, they want the nursing person who's playing nursing after to be so furious, right? But what do you see in this image? Such a love for Prahlad, right? Such a love for Prahlad Maharaj. So that is the way God takes care of his devotees. Third one is Krishna. Krishna himself, when he takes care of Sudama, when he takes care of Arjuna, when he takes care of his devotees, he's going to hug them and he's going to take care of them completely. How many of you know this? Who's this? You guys know it, Will Smith? I have started reading Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna said, me, uh, Arjuna inside me has started awakening. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam. So hearing the name of the Lord, singing the, His glories and remembering His name and presence. So that's the most important thing. What do we do? We chant the name of the Lord. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. 